most of the times when uh, people see you being a bodybuilder, they have the notion that you might be taking um, steroids or something. But I think you can do bodybuilding with just food. Yeah, you can do it with food and supplement if you can afford. When you're a pro bodybuilder, every single one is on steroids. Let's make that clear, right? You know that, right? Best of the best of the no names mentioned. I've worked with men who will say, if, I, if you told me that taking anabolic steroids is going to take 20 years off my life, I would still do it because at least I would be big and muscular in the time I was here. It's incredible science. So there's hundreds of steroids that have been produced in the world since the 1940s and 30s. They're either for human grade use or animal use. Equipoise is for horses, dogs, and cats. But these men use all these mixed. They're all mixed. There's, there's something pathological about that. That's not, that's not a healthy way of thinking because at the end, it's not about being muscular, it's about being happy, being confident, being accepted. The regular dose for a testosterone replacement patient is about 100 milligrams of ester per week. Bodybuilders and strength athletes and strongmen can use upwards of five grams a week. 100 to 5,000. It's risk versus benefit ratio. And I always tell people that if they wanna go down that road, that's up to them. But when you're 25, you don't give a shit. You know, when you're 25, you just want to be the best in the world and be Mr. Olympia. So when you get older, I think you start thinking about it more. Well, when you see bodybuilders die at a young age, like Dallas McCarver, I think it's really, really, really sad. There was a guy who had great potential in being, you know, a great bodybuilder. And, you know, his life coming down short for whatever reasons from, you know, whatever he did in bodybuilding. I always worried about my health, you know, you know, I think, you know, my injury that caused me to retire early was probably a blessing in disguise because I would have probably pushed my body, you know, to the limits to try to keep up with uh, the bodybuilders that were like getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Even back then, there wasn't much emphasis on steroids. I know when I got into it, I was more about the training hard, the eating, you know, that sort of thing. Steroids is like I heard about it and I knew it was in the sport, but it wasn't so like now you go on any website today, forums, it's all people talk about is drugs, steroids, steroids. It just drives me mad. Social media has, has a lot of benefits and a lot of pitfalls. And one of the pitfalls are it disseminates a lot of unhealthy information where young people have access to it and now can see uh, some bodybuilder or someone saying, oh, well, if you do this, this, and this, then you could look this big. Let me put it to you this way, though. Okay, look, I have a lot of friends in whole different genres of sports, football, baseball, basketball, and many of them are professional. Golfers use steroids, okay? It's just a thing. It's just, I mean, the kids at the gym, just no, just recreational little, you know, Jersey Shore douchebags I see at the gym, they're all, juiced up and to the max and what have you. Everybody does it. Everybody does it. So uh, why they target bodybuilder? Because because bodybuilders, they take off their clothes. They are in their, you know, shorts or trunks on stage. Obviously, the physique is much different than a norm normal person. So people don't see hard work and effort that go behind. You can take enhancers, you can take this and that, but at the same time, you can't buy the hard work which people put.